All right, so today I wanted to have a look at the PAL version of the Turbo Graphics. Um, this didn't actually get an official release here uh, in the UK or Europe. Now, reading about the internet, um, there doesn't seem to be an awful lot of information about on these. From what I can gather, NEC had planned to release these in the UK and had made the first batch to be distributed to retailers in the UK and Europe. Um, unfortunately, the, the TurboGrafx-16 didn't sell as well as they were hoping in the US. Um, basically because it didn't sell well enough in the US, they decided not to release it at all in Europe. So, like I said, they had already uh, made the first batch of these and after the Turbo Graphics, um, after they had finished supporting it, they decided to uh, sell these on. Now, the main seller of these in the UK is a, a company called Telegames. Um, now I'm not sure, or nobody seems to know sort of how these came into uh, distribution, but the, uh, the companies, the likes of Telegames, obviously bought the first batch that were made and they were released at a later date. Uh, so these didn't get an official release in the in Europe, basically because they didn't sell well enough in the US. Um, these are one hundred percent compatible with all US games. The only downside to these is it plays in fifty hertz. Um, obviously, so it would be compatible with the older televisions in Europe and the UK. So yeah, like I said, they uh, they just play. Um, US games, there was no official PAL games released, so you basically just buy uh, US games. They can also play Japanese games with the use of a converter, uh, which I don't have, so it's just a sample here of a standard uh, American Hue card. So, one difference between this and the US version is these actually have an AV out whereas uh, as far as I know the US version only has an RF out so these have a, an AV port here with a 5 pin DIN plug and it puts out composite video um, apart from that they're pretty much exactly the same as the US version bar the sticker. These were uh, sort of rebranded to be called just Turbo Graphics. They've removed the the 16 from the end of the name. So this uh, still has the protective coating on here which is what you can see there. So that's the the PAL logo there and it also displays it on the uh, expansion cover at the back here. Now from what I can gather on the internet, these are uh, cosmetically identical to the US versions, apart from the sticker. So the same moulds were used, they are a different colour. Um, these are like a light grey, where I believe the US version is like a charcoal or black. The controller the controller is uh, also branded with the PAL logo but if you can see there it actually says TurboGrafx-16 um, sort of embossed right in there so obviously the same moulds were used to make the joy pads as well one interesting thing about these is they weren't actually packed with a uh, AV lead or power supply. 
what they actually got was this accessories pack which came along with it which if you can see there has the AC adapter an RF unit the AV cable and a 75 ohms to 300 ohms converter uh, don't ask me what the hell that is because I have no idea so that yeah this uh, this box came came along with it or was supposedly meant to come along with it when you bought the unit so you can see there it's manufactured by NEC and that's pretty much all the useful information same again on that side so uh, inside this box yes was the uh, AV cable which has the obviously the AV out then on one side and then just composite on the other and the power supply which is uh, this unit here and uh, comes with a UK plug obviously in different parts of Europe it would come with the, the appropriate uh, wall socket there, or wall plug and they also get the RF unit inside which is still in the box, I'm not even going to bother getting it out everybody knows what an RF unit looks like so on the back of this it still has the um, expansion port for use with the CD they obviously had planned to release the CD unit over here if this thing had it taken off this is the instructions manual that comes with the system this is actually boxed in with the system itself um, as far as I can tell it's pretty much identical to the US version um, bar a few differences so it just gives you a general setup guide there on how to plug everything in so there's uh, that must be what your, your ohms is for there are different types of antenna connections so we'll have 75 ohm antenna and 300 So that explains what that's for. <laughs> uh, general guide on how to start up the system and plug in the games and general precautions. And then on the last page here we have a troubleshooting guide and the very last page here it actually specifies that there is an accessories box along with it just here it says accessories box with the uh, AC adapter, RF unit, AV cable and your converter these versions were uh, packed in with blazing lasers um, I think it was known as was it Gunhead or Gunhead in Japan so yeah this, this came packed in along with the, the system itself and like I said it's just a standard uh, US version so taking a closer look at the outer box here just try and show you around I um, have never seen the, the US box close up so I have no idea how much different this is but as you can see it is uh, embossed with the Turbo Graphics uh, PAL logo and looking at the sides of the box here
and the top of the box. As you see it comes with a carry handle. And it's branded with TurboGrafx 16 logo there. Same again on that side of the box there. And the bottom of the box doesn't have anything, it does have a, a barcode. So that's uh, the system box itself. We're just going to have a closer look at the console itself here in uh, some detail. Hopefully some of my American viewers can point out any differences here between this and the US version. So we'll have uh, the AV out here, which uh, I assume would say RF out on the uh, US version. We'll have the logo again. Your on off switch. Your cartridge slot. Your joypad uh, socket. Um, there's a label there for the AC adapter. Looking at the bottom of the console itself here, here we see the information that's uh, sort of embossed into it. And there's a sticker here. Um, there's a label here which says extension port. Sorry, uh, ex expansion bus. I'm trying to read that through the viewfinder here. And here we have your DC 10.6, sorry, 10.5 volts. So these are held together with uh, these security screws. They're a 4.5mm four, four game bit, the same as uh, what's used in the Sega Game Gear. Opening up the system here. We'll have a quick look inside. Um, now, according to what I have read on the internet, there is some differences here in the, the actual circuitry on these. So you have a nice big RF shield, and everything seems to be screwed into the top of the system and not the bottom. The uh, RF shield was actually soldered into place on this, so I had to go around several points and desoldered to get the actual RF shield off. Now there is still an RF shield on the bottom but I'm not going to bother popping that one off because I'm sure there's not too much of interest below. So zooming in here we'll take a closer look at the board. Um, like I said I'm no expert on these things but really I want to try and document this uh, PAL system all in one place. So really none of this makes any sense to me. Uh, that's obviously where your cartridge slot is here. It's your on off switch. Um, from what I read on the internet here, there is actually a couple of extra components on the PAL version. Um, some people have actually tried to make this system run at uh, 60 hertz. Um, without success, um, I have tried changing the uh, clock crystal, but apparently that didn't actually help to speed this thing up to 60 hertz. So there's a couple of crystals there.
your actual uh, power jack there. This is your AV port there. So uh, um, I think this is uh, one extra chip here, which isn't in the US version. Um, this is just from uh, what I can gather from a quick browse on the internet. There is a little bit of information on these out there, but uh, they seem to be very scattered about all over the place. And uh, not easy to read all in one place. So one interesting thing here, we actually have a a clock speed here and uh, there's a line goes up here and points to a little it's almost like a loop of wire um, I have no idea what that is I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up here So that is a uh, look inside the PAL uh, Turbo Graphics. So with the system all put back together here, let's have a look at some gameplay in 50Hz. So this is Galaga 90 uh, on the NEC Turbo Graphics. Um, like I said, this will be running in 50 hertz as it is on a PAL machine. So those of you who used to play these in uh, 60 hertz will immediately notice how slow it runs. One thing I will say though, the, uh, the picture from the AV port is uh, pretty much perfect. Now I play this on a 42 inch uh, LCD screen and uh, it looks absolutely lovely on the big screen through the AV. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> uh, this, this isn't the uh, demonstration of how crap I am at Galaga anyway, this is just a look at uh, the game one at 50 yards. <laughs> 